The Three Wee Pigs from A Wee Book of Fairy Tales in Scots Written by Matthew Fitt and James Robertson Illustrated by Deborah Campbell And published by Ichiku Books Lang, lang ago, in the days of Lang Syne, there were three wee pigs. And one of these grumpies was a run wee puddin' called Johnny the Dowper. Johnny the Dowper's best pal was a daft dumpling o' a pig called Slavery Sam. And the third of this three was a totty wee grumpy with totty wee lugs that everybody just called Alan. One day... Alan, Slavery Sam and Johnny the Dowper were sitting in the fair midden. The three piggies were busy haying a piggy blather. See that big yet? Johnny the Dowper said. What's behind it? Nothing for pigs, replied wee Alan. Dinna you mind it? Nothing, you say, cried Slavery Sam. Dinna be a daft skate. The world, Johnny lad, is a hint that gate. The world, oh ya beauty, the world, Johnny the Dowper, looped up and down, then stapped. What's the world, by the way? It's foo, said Sam, oh food and drink and places to play. Let's go, fidged Johnny, put in your bits Put in your clays. We can't sit about this mid over days. But this is our home, says Alan. Dinna forget. About all the broth food and swill that we get. This firm is safe and warm and comfy. Just the job for a wee grumpy. By all the hair in my bristly beard, laughed Sam. I think this toty piggy's feared. Just caw canny is all that I'm saying, cos neither of you's kens what you're doing. We're doing what we want, and we're getting out. Stay at home if it's bothering your snoot. Well, I dinna think Grumpies should ever leave their firm, so I'm coming with you to keep you for him. They weren't a very far for the farmers yet, when Johnny the Dowper saw a manny with a carty filled with straw. Ha. Oh, Manny with a barra, can I be your best cock sparra? Gonna geese a dod of straw, so I can build a roof and a wall. And hear a hoose that will only fall, ho Manny with the barra. Aye, nae bother, said the Manny, and hundit Johnny a great big dod of straw. The other twa grumpies carried on the road, leaving Johnny a lane to Biggie's hoose. After he'd finished, he was awfully happy and he sat down to hear rest. In a wee while, an old grey wolf came by and kicked in through the window. Wee pig, wee pig, said the wolf. Can I come ben? What? And let in a wolf that I dinna ken? I'm in my house and I'm no feared. By the hair in my bristly beard, away you go, you big hairy clown. Then I will hech, and I will pech, and I will blow your houston. And the wolf hecked, and he pecked, and he blew the houston and ate the wee pig with a gulp. Yon was bro, he said. Further down the road, Slavery Sam met a manny with a cart forward. Hey, manny with a cart, going to be dead good, and geese a dod a wood, so a house I can big, that'll stand ticket and trig, hey, manny with a cart. Aye, nae bother, said the manny, and hawed at Sam a great big pile of wood. Alan carried on his road, leaving Sam alone to Biggie's house. When he had finished, he sat down to hay asleep. In a wee while, the old grey wolf dundered up by and kicked in through the window. Wee pig, wee pig, can I come in? You think I'm daft? You think I'm blind? This is my house, and I'm no fear for you. By the hair in my bristly moo, away you go, you big ugly loon. Then I will heck, and I'll pech, and I'll blow your hoose down. 
and the wolf hissed, and he pissed, and he blew the hustoon and ate the wee pig with a gulp. Yon was off a bro, he said. Further down the road, Alan met a man who a bogey full of stains. Excuse me, sir, if you don't mind, but would you be say off a kind and give me a line of some of your stains to keep out the snow and keep half the rains? Aye, no bother, said the manny, and Alan soon bigot a big braw hoose. Afore very lang, the old grey wolf came by and chapped in his door. Wee pig, wee pig, come out and say hello. If it's all the same to you, sir, I'd rather no. It's late and I'm wabbit and I'm a walk in my bed soon. Then I will hech and I'll pech and I'll blow your hoose And the wolf hecht and he pecked. But no matter who hard he hecht and who said he pecked, he couldn't blow down the hoose of stain. This is no real, said the wolf. I'm puggled. I'm pecked. I'm fair puffed out. But I will soon eat this wee pig. He need it. So the wolf said, Wee pig, wee pig, are you, are you going to the shows? Oh aye, said Alan, by all the hair in my wee grumpy nose. They'll hear a haunted house and a dodgems and swings and I've never had a shot or any of the things. Well, see the morrow. If it isn't bad weather, the bathiers can go down the giver. No, said Alan, I'll meet you there. Let's meet about three. Three's fine, said the wolf, licking his lips. That's just a forty. But Alan the Grumpy went down to the fairground an hour early. He went on the swings and burled down in the dodgems and gave himself an awful flag in the haunted house. And when he couldn't eat any mere candy floss, he came home to his house stain. In a wee while, the wolf chapped in his door. Wee pig, wee pig, I didn't see you at the fair. That's because I was not there. I went down myself. No, was not that crafty. So you couldn't eat me, you silly old dafty. Is that so? Well, you've had it no chum. I'm going to cr- climb right down your lum. And the wolf looped up onto the roof ready to climb into Alan's chimney. But he didn't ken that Alan had a muckle big fire blazing in the grate with a muckle big pot full of water bailing about it. The wolf fell down the lum, straight into the pot, and the pig bailed him up and had him to, had him to his tea. And Alan the Grumpy lived happily ever after in his bra stained hoose.